So, Roxanne, you're here in Dublin for the first time. I first believe. time, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you're from Station F, or the director of Station F. So, for the Dublin startup ecosystem that are very curious, what is Station F? So, Station F is the world's biggest uh, startup campus. We're based in central Paris. We're opening in April of this year. Um, it's essentially a 34,000 square meter historical monument that we are converting into a startup space. Um, for people who have trouble visualizing that, it's like the Eiffel Tower laying down. Um, in addition to our space that's dedicated to startups, we actually have also a housing project that will launch next year. So, we'll be housing on campus 1,000 startups and they'll have living space about 10 minutes away 600 for 600 people. So all of this, we're essentially looking at creating an entire ecosystem that's under one roof. Uh, we announced a few of our first partners. Um, so we have a number of different programs that will happen on site. We're looking at 10 different international programs. We've announced that one will be run by Facebook, dedicated to data. We have one that's run by um, private sales site Vent Privé, dedicated to fashion tech. We have French business school HEC, they're moving their incubator into our space. Uh, we have a couple of venture funds that will be based on campus. We announced three of them. Uh, we have a fab lab that's run by a U.S. brand. We have a massive restaurant that takes over one third of the building. So essentially everything you need to start your startup and live kind of comfortably, easily to get your business up and going. With Station F, we, we noticed that you have a huge base of young startups that they're all looking to share ideas, bounce ideas off each other, um, to have different contacts and resources that they can share amongst them. So getting this volume together means that they're going to have much better resources and things that they can share in those early days. So that's really what we're going for with the scale. You know what's funny? I feel like you find kind of a similar mindset amongst entrepreneurs. Like entrepreneur culture tends to be very similar and I think heavily influenced by what you see in Silicon Valley. Um, that's actually been changing quite a bit over the last few years. So I left about seven years ago, so can't say I was there, you know, working on the ground yesterday. Um, but I think a lot of it stayed the same. At the same time, we've seen prices shoot up in the U.S. People's motivations are now heavily driven by money. I'm not saying that they're not driven by money here, but I feel like entrepreneurs probably are going after something else in addition to money. Their motivations seem to be very different. And I think the challenges are very different depending on your environment. You see, um, I mean, in the U.S. it seems like today everything is just super, super expensive, but a lot of the administrative barriers aren't there. Uh, Europe, especially France, probably better known for the administrative barriers. So I think it really depends. But overall entrepreneurs, I feel like they tend to kind of be the same breed of, of animal. So you've been getting applications from around the world and then the kind of the judging panel is from around the world as well. So do you expect this to be really an international hive of activity? Yeah, we're hoping that this is not going to be a Franco-French project. I've been pushing for that since day one um, to kind of push us out of our comfort zone. And I think it definitely has become that. We've seen, I think, for example, um, a lot of the businesses we have in our space, uh, Vent Privé um, is an international company, but I think Facebook is probably one that really speaks to people as being an international mm -hmm. business. Um, and same with the venture funds, they all, have, they all have investments outside of France. And then with the companies we want to bring in, we really want to have the highest number possible that come from outside of France. We're seeing a lot of attention being paid now from the tech community and the business community as a whole, somewhat uh, to the gender uh, gaps. Is it a lot of lip service or are you seeing action and things actually changing and shifting for the better? It's a good question. I think things have changed a lot. Um, so yeah, we initially launched Girls in Tech Paris and we've just become Start Her. Um, I also launched Girls in Tech in, in London. Very, very different experiences, I have to say. Like, um, kind of interesting to see how different cultures react to the same topic. But I think what I've noticed, um, it's maybe been about six, seven years now that, I, that we've had these uh, organizations up and running. It's nice to see finally many more businesses paying attention to the topic, making it a key topic. Yes, in many ways it is just having, um, I don't want to call it just lip service because it, it does have an impact when you do events that promote and highlight different women, their, their accomplishments and things like that. But I also still see conferences that just have a women's panel and they've just picked like four random women and they're just talking about like what it's like to be a woman in tech and I just find that completely ridiculous. So I think there are some ways to address the topic that are much more effective than others. I'm really happy to see that the ecosystem is paying attention to the topic but I think we have to do it smartly. Uh, you're in 
have been involved with uh, an advisory board to the French government on digital issues. What's top of the agenda in France at the moment in that area? Yeah, so I think actually with the, it's the Conseil National Numérique uh, that I'm involved in in France, um, the topics that we've been involved in probably are less uh, the topics that we see today in the different kind of geopolitical contexts with Trump and Brexit and things like that. But they were uh, largely concentrating on um, education, making sure that the education system that's relevant for the new kind of digital era, if you want to call it that, um, making sure that um, small businesses that are not tech are able to kind of make the switch and migrate to digital um, in, a, in a relatively easy and uh, appropriate way. Um, so they've been working on different things like that. Um, I think that today what we're starting to see with uh, the situation in the U.S., the situation with Brexit, it's going to be completely different. We're going to be talking a lot more about um, probably immigration is going to be at the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably going to talk about uh, financing as we always do, some of the same similar topics that we always talk about, probably education and things like that, but I think um, probably immigration is really going to be at the heart. What I've seen in the U.S. kind of breaks my heart. What I've seen with Brexit, it, it's same. It's just kind of, it's ridiculous. I, I don't understand it because these are, the, this is an aspect that kind of really uh, impacts the ecosystem in a very positive way and I just don't see how we could uh, go backwards, you know, and France has actually, in many ways, when you compare the ecosystems of London, Silicon Valley, Paris, um, the one element that I always felt was lacking was kind of that international dimension to France's ecosystem. That's one of the reasons that we want this to be an international project with Station F. But I think that if immigration in you know the different political climates goes backwards, um, you're only going to end up hurting the growth of these international companies that we're trying to create.